Welcome to a new series on the channel in which we will dig into the technical side of artillery pieces and how they work. I'll be looking at barrels, breaches, recoil systems and more with the aim of providing the basics so that some of the other content might be simpler to understand in future. And if you're not sure about these things already, can appear more of an expert on your next museum trip. I felt the most appropriate start would be to dig into an oft asked question. What is the difference between a gun, a howitzer, and a mortar? Welcome to The Ardent Gunner. So to work. You can find all manner of shapes and sizes when it comes to artillery pieces. Variants of guns, howitzers and mortars often look completely different from each other, but at other times it can be hard to tell the difference. We need to go back to the early days, where it was all a little clearer, and take a look at the defining characteristic, their trajectories. The trajectory refers to the shape of the path of a shell as it flies through the air. One might expect this to be a perfect curve, but it isn't with the shell slowing down faster as it loses energy towards the back end of its flight. You can see an example trajectory here on an old drawing of a mortar bombarding a tower. But what is the difference between the three? A gun has a high muzzle velocity with its shells flying on a flat trajectory. Examples of these guns can be seen in the World War I field guns such as the British 18-pounder and French 75, or even the famous German 88mm anti-aircraft gun of World War II. Included in these would be the tank guns of the modern day. They can be used for direct fire through to longer range indirect fire, but the elevation of the artillery piece when it fires remains low. British field guns up to and through the Great War were designed with a maximum elevation of no more than 20 degrees normally. This means that the shell remains close to the ground when it's fired, as seen in the diagram on the screen. Now compare this to a howitzer. Traditionally, a howitzer, such as those found during the Napoleonic Wars, would fire on a much higher trajectory, normally around the 40 degree mark and above. They often had shorter barrels with the higher elevations allowing them to lob projectiles over cover or terrain. Most heavy artillery in the Great War were howitzers. Mortars were another very early invention, designed to fire projectiles over tall fortifications, but were unwieldy and normally very large, and thus considered heavy siege artillery. These systems fired at very high angles, normally with very short ranges. Here we can see a diagram that outlines the various uses during a siege. Old mortars were typically very difficult to move due to their heavy designs and were reserved for sieges. Howitzers of the time, on the other hand, were more manoeuvrable, usually on a similar carriage to those of the cannons and were often used in open battle as well. This diagram gives a good feel, I think, for the differences you would have seen during a siege and what they could have been used for elsewhere as well. So there we are, a short sharp piece on the differences. These systems have always filled different niches on the battlefield and that continues to be the case. The biggest change seen in artillery design over the last hundred years has been those changes that have allowed the elements of a gun and howitzer to be combined giving significantly more flexibility with just one artillery piece. Gun design would start to change during World War I, and by World War II, most artillery pieces were designed to engage at a wider range of elevations, often unofficially termed gun howitzers. Most modern artillery pieces, whether named a gun or a howitzer, maintain this tradition, good examples being the L118 light gun, and M777 howitzer, artillery pieces that can engage in direct fire as well as through to very high angle trajectories 
at over 80 degrees or 900 mils in the more usual military measuring system. Mortars have maintained their characteristics but have become significantly lighter and in the modern day are typically breech loading and portable, especially in their smaller calibre 50mm, 60mm and 80mm variants. This makes them the weapon of choice for infantry units looking for a system to provide indirect fire within their battalion. Mortars aren't just the preserve of the infantry though, with many artillery units worldwide serving on larger calibre mortars as well. French artillery units are typically equipped with 120mm mortars alongside their 155mm gun, and the 2S4 is a Russian self-propelled 240mm mortar system that is currently seeing use in the Ukraine-Russia war. Knowing the difference between these artillery types helps you understand why armies choose one over the other for certain roles. I will also add that there are many artillery systems that may appear to blend aspects of these different elements. The categories are not always strictly met, but it is a good starter for 10. In upcoming episodes, we'll break down every part of these weapons, from carriages to breaches to recoil systems, and showing how they work. Please do subscribe and join us. Next time, we will take a look at the structure of an artillery piece. Otherwise, I hope you found the video interesting. Thank you for stopping by with the Arden Gunner.